Today we're talking about electronics for camping and backpacking. I do want to preface with the idea that everybody camps different. If you are somebody that enjoys being as minimal as possible, leaving as much electronic items behind at home, cool. If you're somebody that likes to have those items with you and it helps enhance your experience while you're out on a camping or backpacking trip, awesome. That is what I'm trying to accomplish today is to just show the various items that I like to use in the application for them. And then it's up to you whether or not you choose to use electronics in the backcountry. But I think that these are pretty practical. And in a lot of cases, they have a situation that makes sense for them to be used for your time out in the backcountry. So the first thing that we'll talk about is probably the most common that people have with them that is an electronic device and that is some kind of flashlight or headlamp. Headlamps are a must have in my opinion for being out on trail, whether you are camping or backpacking or even day hiking, a headlamp or a flashlight is something that is absolutely vital to uh, be a safety device, but also just for you to be able to see at night. And that is a really important part of being able to enjoy yourself in the backcountry. So the Black Diamond Spot R and the Petzl Bindi are two of my favorite headlamps right now. They provide just enough light for moving down the trail if you are doing any night hiking in your tent or whatever you might be experiencing. And they're nice and lightweight and they're not overly expensive either, but a headlamp is an absolute must. Now, a couple other lighting devices that I think are a staple for camping more so than backpacking is some kind of lantern. So I've got two different lanterns here, the Biolite Alpenglow 250 and the Black Diamond Moji. So you can see that these are obviously very different in size and their application may be a little bit different. The Black Diamond Moji is pretty tiny, has these little hooks here up at the top that allows you to loop that through your uh, tent loops so that will hang from anything. I've also hung this from a tree for like winter camping and stuff where it gets dark a lot earlier uh, in the day. So this is a great lightweight option that still would apply in the backpacking realm, but something larger like this uh, BioLite that also has the ability to hang. But this is awesome for camping where you can have little dance parties. <laughs> but this is a really cool lantern that obviously if you're in a larger tent or something, like a six person tent that I typically use for my family camping trips, we'll use a larger lantern like this that is rechargeable puts out plenty of light to light up the space for changing diapers in my case, getting ready for bed, getting jammies on, getting settled into the tent for uh, sleep for the night. This is a really solid option and I think a lantern is an absolute must that helps with the car camping and just camping in general more so than having a headlamp to just light up a wider space. The next thing I wanna talk about is battery banks. And we're gonna talk about two different kinds of battery banks, but for backpacking specifically, I do feel like a battery bank is something that you should always have with you because the vast majority of us take our phones with us when we go backpacking. We use our phones for navigation and we might have also a watch, which we'll talk about here in a second as well, but some kind of way to make sure that devices that we rely on are able to get charged. Now this is the uh, NB10,000 from Nightcore, and this is an Anchor 20,000 from Anchor. <laughs> but these are really great, reliable battery bank options that are honestly very lightweight and small considering what they provide. So the Nightcore specifically, probably one of the lightest battery bank options out there on the market and it's super tiny. When you compare it to the size of your phone, for example, it's awesome because I'm able to ensure that my cell phone stays charged while I'm out there. I might also have a satellite device that I want to charge or I'm recharging my headlamp. So taking some of these necessary devices out into the backcountry that use batteries 
having a battery bank to recharge things is super important. Now the next item that we're gonna talk about, this Flextail Gear Tiny Pump X. This is something that if you would have asked me like two or three years ago, would you ever take a little pump like this into the backcountry? And I probably would have told you no. <laughs> However, I've been using this pretty much every single trip that I've been going on backpacking and camping because this saves my lungs and my brain from getting lightheaded and everything when I'm at elevation. It's a great, great little piece of multi-use gear because not only is it an air pump, but it's also a lantern. So cool to have multi-use stuff that when you've got a lantern like this black diamond that is pretty much the same size, but this will serve the purpose of two things in one device. And it's really lightweight, up to 400 lumens. I really like this little device here. Now, speaking of watches, I think a really important uh, device for you to have with you out in the backcountry is a GPS watch. I love my GPS watches. So I've got the Garmin Instinct 2S Solar and the Garmin Phoenix S, uh, 7S. These are fantastic. And as I've been using them for the past several months, I have enjoyed just being able to track my heart rate, track elevation, my GPS location. I'm able to see my blood oxygen level. I'm able to see all sorts of different things that allow me to understand better what's happening with my body out on the trail, but also uh, navigation and that kind of thing that I don't always have to be using my phone to save battery life on my phone to even just see where I'm at on the trail to get an idea of my location on this little watch here. Yeah, they are expensive, but I absolutely feel like they are worth the investment a thousand percent. Next item I wanna talk about is something that I love, and that is a satellite communication device. I feel like this is a must have just like a headlamp is. 20 years ago, 10 years ago, maybe not so much, but with the way that these devices have advanced in technology, their cost, and just the reassurance that they provide to family members at home, but also being out on the trail for you to get help as needed in emergency situations. Having a satellite device like this Zolio satellite communicator truly does make a difference in your experience on the trail to pull weather reports, to communicate with friends and family at home, again, to call search and rescue as needed in emergency situations. This is, it, to me, it's an absolute must have. Now, a couple other random things before we talk about some larger items. Just real quick, I love having a little digital thermometer out in the backcountry with me. These are super handy to see what the temperature is, that it might be overnight or whatever. Just being able to see the current temperature is super handy while you're out. Something for more in a camping scenario, especially if you're out with a group, is a two-way radio. <laughs> this might seem kind of random, but having a two-way radio is actually something that I really enjoyed when I'm out on family camping trips. Sometimes we're on four-wheelers or we're out fishing away from each other and want to be able to communicate with uh, my wife back at camp or something, then having a two-way radio is super handy in that. This is a pretty random <laughs> electronic device, and it is new, but this is the Nightcore EMR10. And what this is, is you might be familiar with the Thermacell brand of mosquito repellent devices. This is an answer to that that does not require butane gas canisters to run to provide the heating element, uh, the heat that it needs to heat the pad for uh, the insect repellent that's uh, built into that. So this is a battery powered insect repellent device that also puts out a uh, ultrasonic sound for like mice and rodents and stuff, but the ability for this to run on battery power to help ward off mosquitoes and bugs and things when you're out around a picnic table or backpacking it's not that heavy, not that uh, big of a deal to carry when mosquitoes are really bad. And carrying the weight of this when you're in the thick of mosquito season, this is awesome. So I'm really looking forward to using this uh, when the bugs are 
are bad. Again, this is a brand new device from Nightcore. Next up is battery generators. These have been absolute game changers in my car camping experiences because I am now primarily using a 12 volt fridge instead of a cooler with ice when I'm going out on my car camping trips. And I gotta tell you that having that as my solution for keeping food cold as opposed to relying on ice in a cooler is absolutely the way to go. And so being able to use a battery generator like this to power that fridge, which we'll talk about here in a second, as well as power everything else that you are using when you're out on a car camping trip. You might have iPads that you're using to watch a movie in the tent at night. You might be doing a lot of photography or flying a drone or other things. And so being able to charge those batteries for those devices is super helpful. But just having something that is a reliable power source that allows you to essentially be off grid is super nice and super helpful. And in this case, I've got different types of 100 to 200 watt solar panels that I can connect to this and not have to use power from my car to be able to keep these charged and everything while I'm out on a car camping trip. So I really love battery generators and what they provide. I've got the EcoFlow River Pro, which is a 700 watt hour uh, battery generator. And I've got the Blue Eddy EB55, which is a about 500 watt hour battery generator that these are pretty compact, really easy to move around, and they just provide that power that you need when you're out there on a car camping trip. And last but absolutely not least is a 12 volt fridge. Like I was just saying, having a 12 volt fridge is so much better than relying on ice in a cooler because I can get consistent cold through a compressor system that just provides the ability to keep food cold for as long as I want, as long as the battery generator is powered and charged and able to power this unit. So this is the Go 20 from Iceco. There's a ton of different uh, fridge options that you can get, but this is a great like weekend size for two or three people to enjoy uh, being able to keep cold drinks, other food cold for the uh, time that you're out on a car camping trip. Obviously, again, not a backpacking related item, but for car camping, this definitely, definitely beats carrying a large cooler, having to keep ice in there. And if you are out for an extended period of time and you're base camping, then you've got to like always be worried about, is my ice uh, still in ice form or has it melted? And do I need to go find more ice to keep my food cold so that it doesn't go bad. You don't have to worry about that with a 12 volt fridge like this. This is awesome. So anyway, guys, that is all of the electronic items that I use most consistently and most often for my backpacking and car camping trips and why I use them. Super awesome pieces of gear. I've got links down in the description for you to check out a lot of the stuff that we've talked about today. Thanks for watching today. If you're not subscribed to the channel, you obviously know what to do. Hope you have an awesome day. Catch you on the next one. See you later.